This week we're doing not one, not two, not three, but four Halloween DIY decor crafts. The first one is a spiderweb window art. The things you will need. <laughs> so I used a gray alcohol marker to draw the first pass to sketch it out and also as the shadows and then a black Posca pen for the spiders and a white Posca pen for the second layer of the webs and then a red Posca pen to make them into widows. And then if you want to clean it off, you can use rubbing alcohol or you can scrape it off with a window scraping razor blade. You can have them not be widows if you want. Yeah, mine are kind of all the samey, <laughs> and the smaller they are, the cuter they are. The bigger they are, the more derpy they are. Yeah. But I really like the way this one turned out. I had references for the spider webs, but not for the spiders, and it's really obvious <laughs> that that's what I had. <laughs> Webs, I think, are really pretty, and I think this is a good project because it's super simple. You don't need a lot of expensive supplies, and you can make a pretty big impact. Dude, the light was crazy. It was cloudy, and then not cloudy, and then cloudy, and then not cloudy, and the light was just acting insane. This is similar to our Christmas window from last year that I think turned out really well, and we also used the alcohol markers and Posca pens. I love that thing. But this will be a lot easier to clean up because that one took a lot of scraping. Can confirm. <laughs> because of the barrel of monkeys. Yeah, the next scarrel is a scarrel of monkeys. monkeys. Yeah, it's because <laughs> it's based on the barrel of monkeys, but they're skeleton monkeys. The things you will need. Either styrene, foam core, masonite, or coroplast, depending on what kind of firmness you want and where it's gonna be. An X-Acto knife and thick paper and spray paint. And if you're using styrene or masonite, you'll need a scroll saw, a jigsaw, or a band saw to cut them out. I'm using styrene. It's not to be confused with expanded styrene, which is what styrofoam is. This is the flat, plasticky, hard version. And I stack them up and I cut them on the scroll saw and I had too many in the stack. They sort of melted together at the bottom. So I don't know that I'd suggest stacking them or at least for sure not stacking them quite as high. If you were stack stacking masonite, then you wouldn't have that problem. And if you were using foam core or coroplast, then you can cut it with just an exacto knife. I drew up a stencil for these guys in Adobe Illustrator and printed it out on cardstock and then cut it out with an exacto knife. We'll put the file for the PDF on our Patreon in case anybody wants to make them. So we cut out the pieces for the faces and then glued them on with a glue stick so that we could just pop them off but they wouldn't blow away with the spray paint. You could just draw the bones on with a Posca pen but since you kind of need a bunch of them to have them be able to dangle from each other and hang on to each other and make an impact, it's easier to do a stencil. So now I'm spray painting. I love my spray paint. Years and years ago, we had a Etsy shop and I made a bunch of these, but I made really big ones for outside and I made them all out of coroplast. And the stencil at the time was made out of half inch MDF and it created some really nice shadows. But these are fun because they're smaller and they're more versatile, I think. They can be indoor or outdoor. If the glue stick left any residue, then you can just scrub it off with water because the spray paint's not going to go anywhere. Are paint and spray paint made out of different stuff? Or is the only difference the fact that one is spray and one is... Most spray paint that we have is oil-based spray paint. And most of the paint paint that we have is acrylic water-based. <laughs> So there's the Coroplast ones. These are 10 years old. These are the outdoor Coroplast ones and I love them. And I love that you could just take four eye shapes and five mouth shapes and just sort of switch it up and rearrange them. And you can turn the mouths upside down or the eyes in different directions and you could get this endless variety. The skeleton stencil was always the same. Yeah. 
this one is lanterns, just like the pretzel bear lanterns that we made back at the beginning of summertime. I love those so much. They turned out so cool that we decided to do a Halloween version. So these are gonna have a lot of darkness with some glowy parts. The things you will need. Jars white spray paint for the inside of the jars. You just missed it in there. Alcohol markers for the color, Posca pens for the outlines. We used some acrylic paint for the bigger black areas to cover it quicker. And then you need some LED lights. We've got some LED flicker candles. Lead lights. <laughs> it's LED. I just did a bunch of glowy faces. Like a jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, like a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns in the a, dark. There's a tiny one. There's yeah, a tiny there's one. There's a tiny one. Yeah, mm -hmm. you did all of them kind of small. And man, I thought it was hard to edit around your hair before you got it cut. But now that you're a big poof ball, my golly. <laughs> <laughs> and then Samantha, when I said we were going to do lanterns again, I made the suggestion of doing pumpkins or skulls or bats, and Sam decided to do pumpkins with skulls. And you drew your design and then transferred your design to the barrel. And oh man, I am so impressed with this. This is such a good design. So starting with the alcohol markers doing the color and then some, well first you do the outlines the sketches with sharpie and then colored it with the alcohol markers and you have a plague doctor skull and a deer skull there's a variety here of skulls and then the cracked one with the red eyes and the blood that's the creepy one the creepy one the, the creepy evil skull i think they're all super cute so then you used the Posca pen to do the outlining and then melted out some bright spots in the eyes. So the eyes glow, it's so cute. How do you feel about your barrel? I like all the expressions that I did. I like the expressions you did too. I, I, I just like it. You just like it? It turned out exactly as you had drawn it. So that's pretty <laughs> exciting. I like the Plague Doctor one. So I'm going to be making them out of MDF. I use three quarter MDF for the bases and then half inch MDF for the little guys standing up. But if you were going to put them outside, then you might want to use MDO. So MDF is just fibers glued together and MDO is more like plywood, but it's got resin in it and it's pretty weatherproof and it has a really nice smooth surface. I love MDO. You also need a jigsaw and a table saw and acrylic paint. So I'm cutting the pieces for the bases, and first I just cut the shapes and then I cut slots in them, basically doing kind of, what would you call that, a dado cut? But I'm cutting the slots in them to put the little guys standing up in. And then I base them all yellow to start with. I primed them all yellow and then uh, there's a blue one, a yellow one, a red one, and a green one, just like in the game. So there's a lot of different varieties. Candyland's have been around for a long time, but the top right are the ones that I remember. They're really cute, but they're kind of creepy also with their arms out like that. And they're just walking down the road, frozen expressions and their arms open wide. It's a little creepy. And I was thinking, you know, you get enough candy and um, you start feeling kind of gross, <laughs> but you still want candy. I feel like a candy land zombie makes sense. These zombies that all they want is more and more candy. And they're just surrounded by a world of candy and they just keep getting sicker. <laughs> sicker. So yellow is not a zombie yet. He's our little worried friend and he, he has not been made into a zombie yet. But the other three, oh dear, they've had too much candy. Oh no. I decided to do black outlines since they're zombies because I thought it would pop off of the colors better. And I think it does off of all except for the blue. And there's the brain that got added to the green. And then the blue guy has a pop and eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just using acrylic paint and I watered it down a little bit so that it would flow nicely. I'm painting these things laying down so it's really easy because even if the paint's <laughs> a little thin, it's not going to drip, which is great. 
because that can be a problem if you're painting something that's standing, like a mural. Then you thin out the paint and it can start dripping. But these guys are so easy, and especially since they're zombies, so if you get something wrong, you know, it, if you end up getting a little sloppy somewhere, it doesn't matter because they're zombies, you know? They're supposed to look a mess. What do you guys think of the zombies? They're fun. I can't unsee the thing that you told me with the too much candy. Too much candy. Make you into a zombie. Look out. Beware. Just in time for Halloween. Yep. Thank you.